everyone. So this is an analysis of the SLAT 2020 exam that happened very recently. So we'll go ahead and look at each of the individual sections, how they went and what could be a good score in each of those sections. And we'll also go ahead and understand overall what could be predicted cutoffs that you can expect to get into one of get a call from one of the symbiosis law schools. Now, I'm sure in a way, uh, most of you are relieved that finally the exam season has started off, right? Uh, SLAT was probably the first major law entrance exam of the season because I'm sure all of you have been endlessly waiting for the exams to actually happen this year because it's getting uh, delayed over and over again. Right, so I hope all of you had a good start in that sense. Now let's go ahead and understand and look at uh, the exam on the whole, how it went. So uh, the exam this year was held on three different days, that is from 26th to 28th July, and it was held and conducted in a remote online proctored mode. That is students were able to take the exams from their home and the proctoring or monitoring was done in a remote manner. Right. Uh, given the current situation, the number of questions and the time were also reduced proportionately. Earlier, you used to have 150 questions which had to be done in 150 minutes. Uh, this year, it was reduced to half. You only had 75 MCQ questions and you had 75 minutes to answer those Right. One another major change that we saw this year was the inclusion of the written ability test along with the aptitude test itself. Now, in the earlier years, the VAT round always used to happen after the written exam was done and after candidates were shortlisted for the VAT and PI, that is when it used to happen. But this year it has happened along with the online aptitude test itself. Right. And you had another extra 30 minutes to do that test or for that section as such. So overall, 75 minutes for the 75 MCQs and an additional 30 minutes for the essay is what you had, is what the entire SLAT exam looked like. So and as always, there was no negative marking. So SLAT has always been uh, lenient in that aspect. So let's go ahead and look at each of the sections individually. Now, the reading comprehension section, again, this year, each section had only 15 questions as compared to 30 questions earlier. Uh, RC section had no uh, surprises, I would say, majorly unexpected lines only. You had three passages with five questions each. And across the three days, there was not uh, too much of a difference in terms of the level of the questions or the type of the questions or the passage length as such. Overall, on all days, questions seemed fairly direct and straightforward and the length of the passages was also not too much I mean it wasn't too long it was moderately sized and uh, pretty reasonable I mean fairly easy to do kind of a section and again I am sure given that the new CLAT pattern has all passage based questions you guys have been practicing it for so long now uh, I'm sure I mean doing three passages is definitely not a difficult thing anymore right so again overall an easy to moderate section is what we would say the RC was and 12 out of 15 would be a pretty good score in the section to have right and again like I said across the three days no major changes in terms of the level so 12 on any day would be a good score for this section right uh, going forward let's look at the legal reasoning section again 15 questions is what it had uh, this year the focus was majorly on legal reasoning last year I think the focus was mostly on legal aptitude or legal knowledge or legal GK kind of questions it was higher last year but this year again it is back to the legal reasoning kind of questions which were more so you clearly had mostly fact based questions uh, some with principles and some without principles again pretty much much expected a uh, slack pattern it was you also had a few questions on assertion reason and which is which usually tests you on your legal knowledge or legal GK as such uh, 
Again, across the three days, uh, there could have been minor changes in terms of the number of questions of each type that you got. But uh, in terms of the level of the questions and the level of the section overall on all the days, it was pretty similar. And I would say it was of an easy to moderate level, only not difficult at all, very much manageable. And given that you have uh, more time per question in SLAT, if you compare with other exams like ILET or CLAT, you in SLAT definitely you have more question per more time per question that way, and there is no negative marking also, right? So definitely having all those things in mind and the level of questions was also not at all high. I mean, it was not at all difficult. So a score of 12 across any of the three days would be a decent, would be a good score for this section, right? Uh, moving on, let's look at the logical reasoning section. Again, no major surprises here. Although, yes, students did feel that there were a lot of AR type of questions in this section as well. But again, this has been something that uh, SLAT has been doing across the years. I mean, even though SLAT has two separate sections, one called logical reasoning and one called analytical reasoning. But even in the previous years, we have seen AR type questions coming into the logical reasoning part as well. I mean, since we have two sections, we would usually expect that the logical reasoning may have more of CR based questions. But as I said, SLAT has always had AR type of questions in this section as well over the years. And it was the same case this year as well. Uh, across the three days, I would say probably some days the AR type of questions were slightly more as compared to the other days. But on the whole, again, uh, the level of the questions was not majorly different across the three days. So the typical CR type questions also you had all the familiar ones like, you know, your uh, assumption conclusions, strong weak arguments, syllogisms, assertion reasoning, a few of them. So all the standard uh, CR type question that you would expect in any section that were there. And like I said, yes, some few um, AR based questions were also there. The numbers could have been uh, uh, different over the three different days and there were also a couple of questions based on visual reasoning that were tested um, so again this was something probably i mean not a major put off or a major surprise as such um, in the sense that you could have attempted these questions also fairly simply and again at the end of the day you always have an option to guess because you do not have a negative marking system in SLAT so I mean even in case you didn't solve it during I mean in the middle of the exam you could have probably left it for the end and solved it at the end and if not you could have taken an intelligent guess to you know um, for these questions as well. Again, they were not too difficult, but I've seen that students sometimes, you know, they get really put off when they look at visual reasoning questions, although uh, they are not necessarily very difficult. It's just that something maybe you didn't expect it to have there. That could be one of the reasons. But on the whole, it was still a pretty straightforward and easy to moderate section only across the three different days. Again, like I said, the type of questions, the number of questions of each topic could have been uh, a little varying over the three days. But nevertheless, a score of 12 out of 15 on any of the three days would have been a good bet for this section, given the level of the questions. Uh, next, moving on to the analytical reasoning section, again, a very straightforward, very much on expected lines kind of a section and probably the easiest section of all given all the five the easiest of all you had the standard uh, kind of ar questions puzzles series coding clocks calendars again in this section also i mean one day may one day the exam had clock based questions whereas the other day it had a uh, calendar some day it had series the other day it had coding so that kind of a variation was definitely seen but again no major variation in terms of the level it was not like some day it was very difficult whereas some day it was very easy so it was definitely not like that uh, again maths questions were seen in this section which is again not really too much of a surprise because SLAT has been doing this for the last few years at least. Uh, every time we've been seeing at least some questions from maths getting tested in the AR section definitely. 
so this year also it was nothing different and uh, probably what was different was in terms of the number of questions again uh, the number of test uh, maths questions across the three different days was slightly varying uh, some days it was more some days it was less but again uh, maths in slat has also always been very straightforward your typical arithmetic based questions on maybe percentages ratios averages those kinds of questions only so not something that is too difficult so uh, this being the easiest section among all the sections i would say a score of 13 on any of the given days out of 15 would have definitely been a pretty good score right uh, moving on to the last section which was your gk uh, this one i would say uh, i wouldn't say difficult but uh, compared to the other four sections this was probably more towards uh, moderate to difficult as compared to the other four sections so as usual it had a mix of both current affairs and static gk type of questions again some days the static gk was slightly higher than current affairs also but usually also in slat over the previous years also we have seen that the split has been more or less around 50 percent we get around 50 percent each of current and static slight variations here and there in terms of the numbers could have happened uh, has happened this year but overall no major surprise in the term in the sense of getting static gk because slat has always had that right so common areas tested were your awards government schemes defend history geography those are pretty standard areas that are usually tested uh, i think you had a few very straightforward kind of questions like uh, nobel prize and the uh, gaganyan humanoid uh, question thing some straightforward questions were definitely there but uh, on the whole if i have to say uh, the students did feel this section to be slightly tricky i mean some questions at least so a score of 10 on any given day any of the three days would have been a good score for this section i would say overall a moderate to tricky kind of a section more so compared to the other ones this was probably the most uh, tricky section of all in this year's slat exam um students did feel that maybe the second day it was slightly easier as compared to the other days but not again not a major change as such so overall on all the three days it was still a moderate to tricky level of uh, you know section we could say so on any day around any score between a, a 10 or more than that would have been a decent bet in this section right um, now as i was saying the written ability test or the vat was also included uh, this time along with the aptitude test itself so let's go ahead and look at that before we look at the cutoffs and all of those things so for this test, uh, you had 30 minutes and you had to write one uh, essay on one of the topics. Two topics were given, so that was good. You had an option to choose from. But again, if you look at the topics, it just listed down some of the topics. Again, they were pretty standard um, current topics i mean things it's not like something very different or you're not aware of at all if you are a serious aspirant and if you are you know doing your current affairs regularly if you're preparing for your current affairs etc regularly these topics are something that you have definitely been in touch with and come across and read a lot about right so women empowerment privacy and data protection the visag gas leak post covid world that is something that has been like a burning topic right now so i'm sure all of you were able to deal with that and fake news also for that matter especially in current day scenario right so these are some of the topics again like i said you did have a choice to pick one from two given options so that was good and 30 minutes around uh, 300 350 word limit should have been a fairly okay kind of a thing to deal with and i'm sure all the alp students who had attended we had done a special session on uh, the slat writer written ability test so those who had attended the session and those who have been practicing our slat mocks in the new pattern wouldn't have found this section too difficult at all right again one thing to note here is that this section will be evaluated only for those who clear the cutoff in the other i mean in the aptitude section only if you 
clear the cutoffs given in the MCQ aptitude test. Only then this section will be evaluated. I mean, this is more like those who get shortlisted for the interview. Only for them, this section will be uh, sure evaluated. This is very similar to earlier years. Earlier years also, only those who actually cleared the written aptitude round were had to do this section but since this year the section has already happened but the evaluation will still happen only for those who actually get shortlisted for the interview right uh, now just a quick recap of the good scores that we talked about in each individual section and like i said around 12 in each of reading comprehension legal and logical reasoning analytical reasoning being the easiest of all sections even a score of 14 would have been a great go but anything between anything a 13 would also have been a pretty good bet out of 15 in this section uh, GK again compared to all the others uh, being the moderate to difficult section of this year's paper a score of 10 would have been a safe bet so on the whole if you see uh, something in the range of 59 plus or something in the range of 59 to 63 64 would have been a decent score to get in the top SLS colleges again this is not the cutoff as such we'll go ahead and look at individual cutoffs also but something in this range would would make you safe right you would definitely you can definitely expect calls from the top colleges under with this kind of a score range right so let's go ahead and look at the cutoffs for the individual colleges that you can expect uh, again, as we know, we have four different colleges for Symbiosis Law Schools, that is uh, Pune, Noida, we have one in Hyderabad and we have one in Nagpur. So over the years, obviously Pune has been, the cutoffs for Pune have been the highest, then Noida and then Hyderabad and Nagpur more or less on same lines. Within Pune and Noida also, usually over the years we have seen at least in the majority of the years we have seen that ba llb cutoffs have been slightly higher a few marks higher than the bba llb cutoffs obviously i do remember there was one year where this there was an exception where bba cutoffs went slightly higher but like i said exceptions can always happen now this cutoffs between ba and bba a lot of times depends on how many students have actually applied to that particular college and that particular course right so obviously the cutoffs to a lot uh, to a large extent will depend on that also not just on the performance in the slat exam but also on how many students have actually applied to that particular program the cutoffs might slightly vary across those lines but on the whole according to our predictions according to the expected trend over the last few years we believe that anything between 59 to 62 or a 59 plus in general would be a good score or a good cutoff to get into BA LLB in Pune and BBA LLB as usual would be a couple of marks lesser than that so something around 57 plus should be a good bet. Similarly, Noida has always been a couple of points lower than Pune in terms of the cutoff. Again, there could have been exceptions couple of, uh, one, or one year here and there. But uh, overall, majority of the years, it has always been a couple of uh, marks lesser than uh, Pune as such. So something around a 57 to 59, 60 score would be a decent uh, cutoff that you can expect in BALLB Noida and something around a 55 to 58 would be a decent bet for BBA LLB in Noida, right? Uh, Nagpur and Hyderabad, both uh, Nagpur and Hyderabad, a score of around 48 plus should be a good enough bet or should be a decent cutoff to get into one of these colleges. These have always been uh, lower than obviously Pune and Noida. Again, the marks or the cutoffs that are mentioned here are for the general category or the unreserved category now slat definitely has different categories and each of the colleges have different reservation policies so yes the cutoffs could be uh, lower for those but this is more for the open category or the unreserved category or the general category as such so this is a brief uh, idea of the cutoffs that you can expect uh, in this year's slat exam right and uh, going forward now that the exam is done 
once the exam is conducted the remaining process is conducted by each of the law schools separately on their own now i'm sure you all are aware of this and you would have applied to the colleges and the program separately for slat not only do you have to uh, enroll for a uh, register for the exam you also have to go and apply for each individual college and each individual program separately so if you have done that according and if you do clear the cutoffs of those particular programs in that college you will definitely get shortlisted and you will get a call for the next round which is the personal interview round right so um, 7th august is when the results are expected to come out so keep checking not only the set test website but also the individual sls websites for pune noida and all and keep a track of their important dates also because they'll release uh, the interview dates and this year the interview is also going to get conducted online so the number of days the slots etc could be more right earlier also in the previous years they used to have interviews conducted across 3 4 days each of the slss usually used to have that but this year again since it is online and all the number of days could be slightly more or the slots could be slightly more than that so keep checking the websites uh, continuously to have all these updates uh, from our side also we'll keep updating you guys from anything new that keeps coming up a uh, personal interview is something that yes now you guys can start preparing for that uh, all alpians i'm sure must have attended the gdpi session that we had done some time back i think in the last month or so we had done a session on uh, you know skills and tips important tips for, to ace the personal interview rounds in slat right so i'm sure you will find that helpful so you can go back and refer to that also once again and any further assistance that you would need in terms of the further rounds any information or with respect to interviews or anything you can always reach out to us we'll be more than happy to help you guys right so like i was saying in the beginning i hope uh, this has you know uh, gotten all of you uh, given a good start to all of you so now irrespective of how you did in the slat exam now prepare for the interview let's wait for the results let's wait for the best prepare well for the interview and at the same time continue preparing for the ielts and clat exams as well so uh, all the best from abhyas law prep team and if there is any any doubt any queries that you might have with respect to any exam or anything specific you can always reach out to us so that's all for today from my side thank you guys